All right, I think this guy is about to talk about one of my favorite isekais ever. Kumodeska. So I'm a spider, so what? Such a beautiful story, such a deep, mysterious plot going on. And one of the best templates in the first episode were the entire classroom with established hierarchies of who the popular kids are, who are the bullied, who are the normies, right? Who are the crazy ones? But on top of that, they hide the identities by making it seem like, who are these kids, you know, because they spawned in and they were reincarnated on different sides. Are they good people? Are they bad people, right? It's amazing. I love that. But <laughs> Velcro has a video called The Isekai with Wasted Potential. Let's see what he has to say about one of my favorite isekais that did get butchered by CGI. It's not unheard of for animes, especially isekais, to get bad adaptations. In fact, at this point... Yo! Did... Villainous level 99 get a bad adaptation? When this is airing, seasonal anime, about a season, like about a season or two ago, it popped off in my channel like crazy. The viewership was insane. And it seems like a lot of people were not complaining about like the adaptation. The, the, the CGI fights are dookie for sure, right? The <laughs> there is a lot of jarring combat scenes, but aside from that, like I thought it was a pretty good show, but again, I don't know the source material. In fact, at this point, it's basically a staple. And even if the adaptation is done well, by the time it gets a second season, season two. you've turned 30, your parents kick you out for not having a job or a girlfriend, wah, wah. and all your friends think you're gay. What? I'm 17, by the way, so this doesn't really apply to me. Just 17 year old with this voice? Cap, you're 34! Just in case you were wondering. But one thing's for sure, whenever it comes to animes getting their source material done justice, it rarely happens. Yeah. And one such izakai is Soma Spider, So What? Or I love my show. Australian viewers, So I Slept With a Spider, So What? Right, because there's a lot of fucking crazy spiders, right? Y'all really fear nothing and have every reason to fear everything. Now, to give you a rough idea of what I'll make you crap your pants so what is about, it starts off as this story about a girl, Hiro Wakaba, who's being ostracized from her class and being mm -hmm. bullied by the other girls, while all she's doing is just reading her favorite S-tier manga. But... Tensura bias! Tensura bias! Dude, the Tensura manga art is actually so good. Her favorite S-tier manga. But Megumi had found her new favorite target and decided to blow up the very school that they were in. Lore accurate, right? Admin D. I forget the exact details, but there was an explosion and the souls were then collected and put into this seemingly game system? And after that happens, we found out that all the people who were caught up in the explosion, say it with me now, yeah. reincarnated yeah. into another Ooh. world. And it's got all the tropes that you'd expect. This is the annoying naive hero. God, this fucking... Bro... <laughs> Should have gone with his brother. I, I don't know. I, am I hating him too much? I don't know. Something about this guy pisses me off. Especially near the end with this naive understanding of like heroism. Bro, and this is his friend that... Yeah, I would. With your, your, your homie. Your best friend homie. Got turned into the most fucking waifu girl. <laughs> Used to be a guy. Well, this could be an anime all by itself. Oka -chan. I reincarnated as a hero's waifu, but I used to be his guy best friend. Honestly. That concept, because people love gender bender and traps and shit like that. And no, 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 well, well, this is not a trap, but like, I think a show like that would go crazy. Where you turn into a wife. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it would go crazy. Yeah, no way that exists though. Oh, yeah, it exists. It, 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 does it go crazy? <laughs> Right? The bully girl is a pet dragon, serves her right. The yeah. teacher is a lolly elf, and Hero is, well, we all guessed it, a spider. We then see her spawn in a dungeon as she finds out that she's actually become a spider. And yeah. instead of freaking out like any normal teenage girl she would, was down. her reaction is... No sense sweating it now. Well, I guess she was... Yeah, Wakaba has a very interesting mental state where she's so, like, strong. She's so, like, stoic. She comes across so many difficult challenges, but she just, it is what it is. We go on. But there's also moments where you see that seemingly facade of a mask of being independent and strong kind of like break as she like just lashes out about how much she has suffered and how much 
how hard it has been. Wasn't human to begin with with a reaction like that anyway. Now that she's accepted being a spider, we see her constantly fighting for her life, beating dragons and giant catfish, and the yep. heroes that are supposed to beat the demon lord are just chilling in a nice ballroom, having some of the best drinks that you could possibly... Bunch of fucking frauds, bro. Hugo the biggest fraud. Really think of. Then we're back to Kumako, struggling to find something to eat, and has to eat the equivalence of a Popeye's biscuit without any liquid. And like anyone Isn't else, she almost dies. Fast forward a bit, and we find out that while Kumako was leveling up and almost dying multiple times, the heroes were actually either not born or still sucking on breast- Exactly. This is the fascinating thing. The timelines. The different timelines, different factions. You're in wondering when Wakaba is doing this, what's going on? And like, there's even more lore that gets built up because Wakaba becomes like the nightmare of the Elro Labyrinth. And there's like a, a party that got dispatched with the hero that went with it. And it's crazy, man. And the perspectives. To us, it's just cute spider. Wahaha, <laughs> fun times. But when it's from the human's perspective and they see the spider, it's totally different. It's terrorizing what the spider can do. Point proven when she finds this cute little vampire girl that turns out to be a former classmate of hers, mm -hmm. who, just like Hiro, was kind of left out by everyone else in the class. She didn't really get bullied, but more teased about how she looked and her personality. Anyway, she found little Miss Drac and decided that she's her new favorite pet and decides to protect her. So she ends up living in the same kingdom on the outskirts of the village that the vampire's dad is the leader of. Speaking of the parents, how the hell did she come out a vampire? From what I know, both her parents are humans. Her dad's a Were human, they? her mom's a human. Oh, I thought the mom was a vampire or some shit. So how the hell did she come out a vampire? Did I miss something where Dracula know. decided to descend and just make her one of his kin? Or did something else? Well, I mean... Is the dad not a... Make her one I mean, when you show me this scene, it looks like he's a vampire, too. I don't know, red eye with the fangs like this? I, I, it's been a while since I watched Spider, but the parents, huh? Is kin, or did something else happen? I'm lost. But like I was saying, she ends up spending a majority of her time... Both parents are human. She just spawned a vampire? That's just possible? Okay. ...in the kingdom that they were in. And then she accidentally started a war with a neighboring nation. Even though they were pretty much just waiting to start one, she just kind of helped. And after a while, she ends up meeting the demon lord, and yeah. those two go back and forth, trying to kill each other constantly. But it was more like Kumiko was just running away from her like the spider you find in your room. And like said spider, nothing ever goes well when you can't see it. But eventually, the demon lord manages to actually kill our dear spider. Rest in peace, Kumiko, and I'm sorry for your loss, Aussies. Psych, she reincarnated, but this time as the number Ooh. three on my waifu list, cause god damn! Arachnophobia, nah! And I'm sure people watching this videos have already seen this show, so this is kind of spoilers, but there is a crazy, like, guessing game of like, who is Wakaba? Who is Admin D? These identity choices for the longest time, I thought that the Demon Lord was Wakaba, but it's like, what the fuck? It wasn't! Oh, we got arachnophilia, am I right? Nah. That was a joke. I promise I'm not attracted to legs. He's Australian! All of this happened before the war with the heroes, the demons, and the elves. And that's the next time we see her, but this time she doesn't have the legs. Or... Man, the CGI, bro. It's just like, again... <sighs> One of the few shows where... And, and I think the CGI really became shitty in Season 2, especially near the end, during the war. Season 1 CGI... It was apparent, but it wasn't this bad. And because the plot, the mysteries of the world, the world building, everything about it just compelled me. I was willing to overlook the CGI, but it is just abhorrent. We see her, but this time she doesn't have the legs. Or actually, she only has two of them. And we find out that she's actually allied with the Demon Lord now. But that's basically everything that happened. I know I probably messed up the order of certain things that... Yeah, you fucking... I mean, chronologically, I guess it makes sense, right? Because the season... He, 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 I thought that he'd start from, like, season 1 content and build it up, but he just, like, jumped to season 2 content as working backwards, and chronologically, it does make sense. Went down, but this anime is structured a bit weird, so putting everything together accurately was pretty much impossible. Now, apart from the absolutely horrendous animation and CGI yeah. that Soma Spider So What has, 
Everything else about the series is actually pretty Amazing. good. Amazing. I've rewatched it so many times that I basically know the entire script by heart. Even before I knew anything about the light novel, I still felt like the series had good potential. Even with Kumoko hard carrying the series, which we'll get in. Did Kumoko hard carry the series? I don't. I don't know. So many people hated it from the humans' perspectives, but to me, whenever it was from Kumoko's perspective. It's not bad, but she's just fighting random CGI fucking monsters that I don't care about, except for Araba. Or I'm not sure what, what the Earth Dragon's name was. That, that was a very heartfelt fight. But most of the fights, I don't care. I care about the mysteries. I care about the world building, what everyone else is doing. The, what, like, Wakaba's actions could have implied into the future from the human's perspective. So whenever it went to the human's perspective, all the mysteries surrounding the skills, the lore, the history of the world, how it was created... Okachan popping off, Hugo doing evil shits, right? I found, and then, and then the church girl being batshit crazy. I actually love the human side more than Wakaba's side. Into later. Apart from Kumako, the world building was well done and the antagonistic side characters felt more interesting and had more depth than the main hero's party. Fucking Potimas, man. Just the, the biggest big brain of all more depth than the main hero's party even though we didn't get to see them much in the anime except for a couple of scenes now i'm not sure if that's how they intended it to be but either way i liked it that way and despite kumiko spending most of her time in the dungeon i never felt bored of seeing those scenes of her trying to survive in it yeah there's great moments of her surviving and usually it's due to sheer willpower determination and then Level threshold met! Full recovery, right? It's a game system that's used a lot. Uh, I, I, I don't mind it, but again, I cared more about the human's perspective because of the... Because, like, different timelines, and you're always trying to guess who is who, and then the actions of Kumoku in the past that could, like, impact the humans in the future. All of that shit was more fascinating than fighting random CGI monsters. But the Araba fight, this is not a random CGI fight, right? But there was a lot of random CGI mob fights that I just was, eh. ...of her trying to survive in it. We had been given an extensive number of new monsters and the different layers to the dungeon gave us a new environment that always felt fresh no matter how many times I saw it. And yes, you do have other Izakais that have tried similar things, but Soma Spider So What is... Kind of like Ari Furita in terms of, I don't know, this whole Isekai setup. And again, I like, this is probably my favorite Isekai setup. There's something about a pre established relationship and the hierarchy of how people act and how people can change with the different powers they've gotten. Maybe the lonely school shooter type is gonna get dark powers and start power tripping. Maybe the super popular kid who was always a nice guy got amazing powers is now again just power tripping and corrupt. Maybe. I, I, something about that, it, it just like fascinates me. Have other and not only that, then trying to guess who are each person, right? Because this is not a summoning. They got reincarnated and they're like different humans, different species. And that element too just adds a next level of complexity to the mysteries of the plot. I loved it. I have other Izakais that have tried similar things, but Soma Spider So What is actually one of the better representations I've seen of doing something like in the way that it manages to keep the story engaging with the minimal change in the environment. Yeah, I thought the whole story was so engaging. I love the plot. Like this. The only other exception being Arifureta. And yeah. even then, I still feel like Soma oh. Spider So What did it. Listen. <laughs> trash belongs in the trash. Right? I love Arifureta. It's fun. But it's... Not the same writing as Spider. Ari Fretta is great. I'm gonna watch season 3. We're gonna watch, and we're gonna have a great time. <laughs> but like, I don't think the writing, at least what I've seen from the anime, comes even fucking close to what like, Spider is. There is like, different mysteries going on, I guess, by attempting different dungeons, and you meet these people, and you start to realize that, you know, all the people that got exiled, the people that like, you know, I forget the exact terminology used. At the bottom of the labyrinth, you know, there's these people that tells, you know, Hajime and crew more about the secrets of the world and how... You can't trust the church! You can't trust any of them! Yeah, I get it, I get it, but... I just prefer Spider. Doesn't mean Arifurita's... <laughs> I call it trash, but I love trash too. It's a trashy anime, right? It's a trashy anime loved by many.
did it better. Hajime didn't have many changes when it came to his environment in the dungeon. In fact, most times... I fucking hated these dungeon episodes. There is little to no meaning except at the end of the dungeon where we get in some fucking new magic and secret knowledge of the world. I do not care about random CGI monsters that has little to no threats to the main character. Maybe the first dungeon, right? Maybe that fight where Hajime and, 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 and Yue had to really team up and there was this crazy moment, right? Where he, got, he went like Super Saiyan. But like, ugh, brother, get me the fuck up. But the moment that we re reunite with the rest of the students, the moment that we start interacting with the classmates and the demon army and shit like that, the traitors involved too, then Arifuruta gets very good. But I fucking hate these dungeon episodes. Sometimes it was nearly impossible to tell which floor he was on or when he crossed a new one. And as we can see from Soma Spider So What, that definitely isn't the case with Kumiko. Even when she left the dungeon, I was still interested in the politics of the different nations and Absolutely. how everything else had an effect on Kumiko's journey. For Absolutely. I just think that the writing is just better in terms of like world building and like making it feel like each of these people, like everything that we do matters to the story. But for Ari Fureta, I cannot say really the same. Maybe it's just an anime adaptation difference. From protecting a little vampire on a whim to fighting... I just realized that this video, the premise of it seemed like we're shitting on Kumo Deska, but we're just dunking on Arifurita now. Wait, <laughs> was this a video that's secretly baiting with Kumo Deska, but it's actually just shitting on Arifurita? <laughs> that's the Isekai with wasted potential instead? ...against her mother and the <laughs> demon lord. All these interactions played a huge role in her journey and who she becomes at the end of the series. Yep. Even though you wouldn't know that from just watching the anime. Which brings me to my next point. I feel like this series was kinda suffocated. Not only did the anime not have the best adaptation, but neither did the manga. In fact, hmm. it's actually worse considering that the anime- The manga's worse than the anime? Really? I guess the light novel's that goaded, but the manga's even worse? Anime is currently ahead of the manga. Imagine that. Who would have thought the day that anime watchers could actually spoil stuff for manga readers? When it's normally the other way wow. around would come. The only piece of media that actually does the series any justice is the original light novel. Before I heard about the light novel, I already felt like the series could have done a lot better. I thought it was only the animation, but it turns out I was wrong. Everything that I just explained is so much better in the light novel that it's not even worth comparing it to anything else. That's usually the case for 99% of the animes that exist out there, right? Because the adaptations are simply cheap marketing tools to persuade you into getting the light novel or the source material. Specifically, the interaction she has. For example, the heroes. I know for a fact I'm not the only one who skipped all of the scenes that the heroes were in. Really? I thought the hero interactions were so fucking interesting. I thought the insanity of this church girl was mind-boggling. I thought that Hugo being a piece of shit just made me feel like, oh, he gonna get it one of these days and Okachan showed up and delivered divine justice. It was amazing. And then to understand more of the, the psychology between this fucking piece of shit hero and his familiar pet dragon and how the pet dragon was a bully but then the bully eventually becomes an actual dragonoid human thing and then her true ego starts to show up again rather than being a humble little girl. I don't know. I love the human side. After watching it for the first time. And if you say that you did, I don't believe you. Because... How? How are you not more fascinated by the different mysteries of who these class kids could be and how they are, have become they are? And like, like, how the fuck do you get more enjoyment fighting random CGI monsters in the fucking labyrinth compared to the fucking politics and like what's happening outside the world as a fucking war is about to happen? Like, am I crazy? Am, am, am I just so weird that like the normal take is... Kumo side with fighting CJ monsters is more interesting? Like, I felt the human side just showed way more about this show, especially with how they perceive, you know, the Elro Labyrinth and the nightmare in it and everything that the Demon Lord has done and the implications of the past actions impacting the future timelines. Because there's just absolutely no way you could sit through eight minutes of this. would never have run in a situation like this. No, you're cherry picking one shitty fucking moment at the end of season two when Shun is showing his stupidity as a naive hero. This is like 
fucking like 1% of the amount of fucking lore that we have just been delivered throughout all of season one and season two. So I won't. I'll honor his memory by not giving up. Every single episode. In the anime, they're portrayed as a bunch of naive kids who are annoying and get led around by the people around them while following behind Shun, who's the most naive out of all. Agreed, Shun is a fucking idiot, but I think that's the point, right? He's supposed to be this white knight, has good intentions, has no understanding of how the world works, has also no competency to deliver on the ideals he has. He's just a silly little kid chasing his foolish ideals while people are fucking dying around him because of his own actions. All of them. And I mean, come on, do I even have to talk? <laughs> okay, this seems to, again, the fights are, oh and my God, bro, it's so bad. <laughs> But you know what the funny thing is? This might be better than Tower of God Season 2 fights. At least it's like fluid. With fucking PS1 graph, PS2 graphics, right? <laughs> I don't know, Tower of God, everything is like in slow motion. And I mean, come on, do I even have to talk about the fight animations? It, it, it doesn't exist. The fight animations are garbage. It looks like fucking sim models, bro. And in the manga, the human parts <laughs> don't even exist. There is almost no content on the heroes whatsoever. Like, they just straight up don't exist. Unfortunately, When you compare that to the light novel where the heroes are portrayed naive and annoying in the beginning, over a period of time they start to seem more understandable and we understand why they think and act the way they do. Oh, and we get to see some interesting development between Mr. Hero and his best friend. If you know, you know. They Stop seeming like just a bunch of kids who are playing hero, and we started mm -hmm. to see that they were. Uh, what happened? Um, fucking that girl was about to die, right? And then Shin has some OP skill, right? No, it was a. I forget exactly how it happened. I I remember there being a resurrection scene though, and you know maybe a mouth to mouth kiss happening but maybe there's something even more beyond that I, I don't know maybe there's something even more beyond that i have no idea maybe they actually fucked seeming like just a bunch of kids who are playing hero and we started to see that they were just a little ignorant and once they realized the truth of the world they mature a bit and started to make the right choices. Mm. Well, at least correct from a moral point of view. And if we're talking about Miss Kumako or Shiro, from what we're shown in the anime and manga, her main goal is survival and yep. being able to enjoy the life that she got. But that's way more obvious and represented better in the light novel. We're meant to think that she's actually the good guy in the series and completely support her. And while you could tell that it's not completely true, it's insane how different it is shown in the light novel. Then again, we haven't gotten that far in the anime anyway, mm. so that's probably also a factor. While Shira's actions aren't always morally correct, when you look at them logically, they always make sense and are hard to- No, I feel like... I feel like everything that Kumo has done, it, 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 it never felt like it's born from a place of evil. People are fucking the people up that we love, and you're getting punishment for it. To argue with. We also get to see a more caring side to Kumoko that otherwise we wouldn't get to see. I don't really know if I'd call it caring, or more so a teacher-like side to her when dealing with certain characters. Again, this is mostly because we haven't gotten a second season or any form of continuation of the series, but I still feel like it- Also, when I, I, when I accidentally said- I think I've been saying second season content. I meant core two, right? Season one has like 20 something episodes. There is no season two. This is part, like core two talk I'm talking about. It wouldn't have been shown the same since it's a common problem in the adaptation. But what I'm basically saying is that we get a closer look at what she's really like rather than just the surface goal of wanting to survive. So much spider, so what could easily be one of- Yeah, they have really hidden all her inner psyches and it, she just becomes like an emotionless doll that kind of walks around later on. but. I think that they might be cooking and later on in the future content they might do more of it, but maybe in the light novel we've got more characterization of who she is. This Izekai is out there if we don't look at the anime and manga. It's one of my favorite Izekais and has my second favorite Izekai character behind Rimuru. And it may just be me, but I feel something similar in Rimuru and Shiro, which is probably the reason why I like her so much. It Rimuru and Shiro is... Similar? It may be the fact that their stories are so similar, or the simple fact that they both have very similar mindsets and goals. But whatever it is, I can't really put my finger on it. When I first started- I just love 
I mean, Kumo is definitely an interesting character, especially with the mystery of who she actually is later on as we start to realize that it's not the Demon Lord. But I think that just, I love Spider because of the mysteries, because of the different guesses that we're always making, the rich world building that we get in different timelines at the same time, the past with, the, with you know, Kumo and then the future with the humans and then everything to converge at one point as we realize at the end, shit, we're with the Demon Lord party now and we're just fucking around. It's, it's, it's so good. Started getting into manga. It was one of the first ones I looked for and I ended up going into a whole Reddit rabbit hole and found out that that definitely wasn't the play. I really do hope there will be a rework of the first season or at least a good I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'd watch it. I'd be down for that season two because so much spider so what could be so much better than what it was before and if you haven't read it yet i highly recommend the light novel or you could always go with the web novel but if you're not someone who likes reading without pictures what i recommend doing is just giving either one of them a try and then go read the manga where Don't it's fine manga. if you miss out some of the human parts and then if a season two comes, you get to see all of that animated. But that's all I've got for you guys this week. So make sure to like and subscribe because- All right, then that's the video. The Isekai with wasted potential was actually Ari Furuta, not Kumudasuka. No, maybe both. I think that Kumudasuka is again, one of my favorite Isekais. I love the initial startup of how people are reincarnated deep with the mysteries. I love the storytelling from two different perspectives, a seemingly good side from the humans and seemingly bad side with Kumo from the monster side, but it's also in different timelines, but you start to get to realize more and more that good and bad is very relative. And there's, you know, bad actors in both sides that are just fucking shit up and we're trying to make sense of it. And the animation for sure, it suffers, but this is one of the shows where, again, the story was so good in the beginning and the CGI wasn't as bad until the latter, latter half that I was willing to just overlook the poor animation because I was just so immersed into the story. And I wish season two would come out. And if season one gets a remake, which it probably won't, but if it does, oh, I'll be fucking there to cover it. Please go give Mr. Velcro's video like, check it out. Here is the link. Check out his channel. And I'll see you next time.